Jesus gave a parable. He talked about a parable. And he says, look, one guy planted his farm. Planted good seed in his farm. And then, the next day the servants came to him and said, Master, was it not good seed you planted? He said, yes. How come we see tars everywhere? And what's Jesus' response? The enemy has done this. And then he says, sir, should we go and weed out the wheat, the tars? Jesus said, no. Leave them to where? The harvest. If not, when you're trying to remove the tars, you'll remove the wheat also. So leave them till the harvest. And then he says, in the time of the harvest, they are going to now separate the wheat from the tars. The wheat he will gather to his garner. The tars he will burn with unquenchable fire. But what did he say about the two? He says, leave them till when? The time of the harvest. So you are breaking your head today trying to separate the two. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God will not give you that ministry. But the truth is, he knows his own. And his own is looking to Jesus for one thing, for eternal life. Because Jesus is the giver of eternal life. And everyone that God has created and has his name written in the book of life, their assignment, God put it in them. Their job is to look to Jesus. Right from Adam. Adam's job was to look to Jesus. That's why you begin to read in the book of prophecy. For example, Abraham, Jesus spoke about Abraham. He said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham saw. And then the Jews said, look at this guy. You're not even yet 50. And he said, you saw Abraham. And he answered, before Abraham was, I am. I know what happened. They carry stones to stone him. <laughs> Praise God. But what was Jesus saying? You will see David. David spoke about him. It was not because of sin. No, because it was ordained. This is the one. So anyone who relates with God so closely, well, their eyes will be open, their understanding will be open to see that there is one that is coming to give us that life. That's what Bible was talking, Hebrews was talking about. Saying, All these men perish looking forward to that promise. They perish looking forward to that promise. They were hoping for something to come. They were expecting something to come. It was not just because he's coming to save them from sin. No. It was ordained for him to bring life. He is the giver of life. It was ordained for Jesus from the before the world began, from the foundation of the world. It was ordained that Jesus will be born and he will give life. That's why John says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was what? Life. So from the beginning, God put life in who? Now in verse 14 it says, And the word became what? Flesh and dwelt among us. When that word came, this is now the one God spoke about when he says, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have what? Dominion. So Jesus came. He began to exercise dominion over everything. He calmed the waves. I mean, just think about it. Jesus exercised dominion. Adam did not exercise dominion. Like God ordained for man to exercise dominion. That's why Satan could deceive him out of his inheritance. He was supposed to exercise dominion over the serpent. Over Satan. But he didn't. Because he didn't even understand but here comes Jesus and Jesus was born the fact that he was born didn't mean he became super overnight no, God began to teach him God began to train him God began to train him listen, the same way God was training Adam because all they knew was God what God told them, am I right? all they knew was what God told them the same way God was training Jesus and God trained Jesus till Jesus was 30 and God said, it's time to be revealed. And he went to John the Baptist and was baptized. And you know the story. After the baptism, where did Jesus go to? The Bible said, the Spirit led him into the wilderness. To be what? Now that's to tell you something. When the serpent came to meet Adam and Eve, he didn't just throw in. 